When the Sega CD touched down in retail markets in the United States in 1992, it was accompanied by an ad campaign that focused heavily on full motion video. At the time, Sega saw that technology as the compelling reason to own the device and doubled down on bringing out games that used it. This led to a Western library that many look back on as the main reason the platform failed to gain any meaningful market share. In retrospect, full motion video is often heavily criticized for its limited gameplay and lack of replay value. But if I'm being completely honest here, there was certainly an air of excitement surrounding the technology because it was so different. The only other time many of us had ever seen full motion video in a video game was at the arcades so I admit I was a bit taken with the idea myself. That really got me to thinking about whether or not the Sega CD had any full motion video games that were actually worth playing today. It was tough to go back and replay so many games that used full motion video as the main gameplay point, but it's left us with a list that I feel sums up the best the genre had to offer on Sega's CD-based add-on. Not all of this was absolute trash, and I have 10 I think you should take a look at. Hope you guys enjoy my top 10 Sega CD full motion video games. Renovation and Wolf Team teamed up in 1994 to bring us Revenge of the Ninja, a port of the arcade laser disc game originally done by Taito. This one is done in the same mold as Dragon's Lair, where you press a direction or button according to the on-screen action. The story has the young ninja Hayate trying to save a princess from the dreaded castle evil. This place is a death trap at every turn, and there is no safe area to rest and relax. To make matters worse, the rooms randomize every time you play it, so you need some serious dedication to see the ending. The publisher even gave away a certificate of completion if you could prove you defeated the game on hard, which removes all the on-screen arrow and button icons. The animation was done by the iconic Toei, who has touched everything from Transformers, Sonic, Road Avenger, Dragon Ball Z, and many other famous IPs. I really enjoyed the look of this one, and if you found games like Dragon's Lair appealing, this one will fit the bill quite nicely. What? Sega and Code Monkeys released the big budget 1994 title Tomcat Alley. This was heavily advertised on TV and in gaming magazines back then. It was a full motion video flight simulator that had you serving as a gunner and radar specialist for a Top Gun fighter plane named Shadow 5. Your job is to hunt down a Russian expatriate who has his own private army and planes to launch deadly chemical weapons on targets inside the United States. Gameplay takes place as an aiming reticle where you can fire your arsenal of weaponry. This includes various types of missiles, bombs, and flares to help deal with stuff fired your way. There are air and ground targets you need to worry about, and there is a measure of strategy to the encounters based on how you approach your targets on the map. The video here is full screen and probably some of the best available on the Sega CD. It's still grainy, of course, but to be full screen, this looks a lot better than what you typically saw on the hardware. If you enjoy the Top Gun type drama, this is essentially an interactive video for it. It was definitely better than it had any right to be. Come on, come on. I've lost Tally. Do you see him? He's gonna fire. Some of you might snicker at Sewer Shark's inclusion on this list, but it's actually got real-time gameplay that sets it apart from other full motion video releases. The story starts out where you are a new pilot in the future where mankind has been forced underground. Your job is to exterminate the giant rats that infest the tunnels surrounding Solar City. 
From there, it's a rail shooter where you gun down radigators while your co-pilot shoots you useful information and critiques your performance. A robot named Catfish is your scout and you need to listen to him when he calls out the order of the tunnels you need to navigate. Miss the cues and you'll end up crashing into a dead end. Visually, the full motion video is what you'd expect on the Sega CD. It's grainy and low color. The gameplay video is a touch better, but Sewer Shark will not be winning any awards for its visual presentation. That gameplay, while simple, is fairly challenging and it has its rewards the deeper you get in. Like most of these choices, it's actually really short, so the challenge is amped up incredibly. Stick with it though, the characters, the randomized gameplay elements, and the ending are worth a few hours of your time. Hi there. I'm Commissioner Stenchler. You know, that wasn't too bad, kid. You got real, uh, real... Potential! That's it. Just remember, a clean sewer is a happy sewer. Don't listen to him. He wants you to blow it. You're barely making it, pal. Push the envelope back a little. Turn and burn. Mansion of Hidden Souls is one of the more unique full motion video releases on the Sega CD. The story is about a brother and sister chasing butterflies when they come across a mysterious mansion. The sister becomes trapped, and it's your job to rescue her. The gameplay gives you full control over where you go in the mansion. The movement itself is on rails, but you're free to come and go as you want, when you want. You need to find clues, talk to the ghost, and find your way out before it's too late. You get a watch that must be monitored closely, because if midnight hits, you are trapped forever. I really enjoyed the story in this one, and if you like the way full motion video games like D played, that's pretty much what you get here. There was a follow-up on the Saturn as well. The Masked Rider is based on the movie Kamen Rider Zo, which came out the year before. Essentially, you interact with the movie fight scenes, pressing the correct button as it pops up on the screen. In that regard, there's nothing special about this game at all. What makes it special and why I recommend you play it is because of the production values that absolutely annihilate most full motion video releases. Turning into a half-human, half-grasshopper superhero, riding your super cycle, and battling monsters with martial arts moves is all sorts of awesome. I was shocked that Sega brought this Wolf Team developed release to the United States in the first place. It wasn't your typical move by Sega, and I was glad they did it. The video quality is grainy, but otherwise very good. You can always tell what's going on, and the color is really impressive. Play it for the experience and then go watch the movie. It's a great gateway title. Night Trap launched with the Sega CD in late 1992. Perhaps its most famous full motion video game, it's been the subject of countless retrospectives thanks to its involvement in the 1993 Congressional Video Game Hearings. It was here that the idiotic politicians in the US thought you were killing half-naked women in incredibly realistic video games, with even Nintendo supporting this stupidity in an effort to make Sega look as bad as possible. The modern video game ratings you see in the United States were the result of this madness, and Night Trap played a large role in its creation. As for the game itself, it's a story about vampires that have invited a group of teenagers to their secluded home and plan to make them their supper. Your job is to hack their security system and trap the bad guys before the kids' gooses are cooked. As you trap the low-level enemies known as Augurs, you eventually get to the point where you must contend with the vampires themselves. 
The story is B-grade direct-to-video quality, but the strategy needed to see the end makes it a fairly decent game, especially if you have a few people to help you. Daddy, he's just one of the neighbors. He's really cute and down. He really cute. Ground Zero Texas is very similar to Night Trap. You control cameras around town that are outfitted with lasers, trying to stop an alien invasion. The problem is all the aliens look like normal people, so you have to do a bit of deductive reasoning to figure out what's going on. Most of your gameplay here is controlling the cameras and using your laser to shoot the bad guys. The video is decent by Sega CD standards and the acting is a notch above that. I was always drawn to this game because it's a bit like a cross between an old west flick and a sci-fi movie, two of my favorite genres. The guy that created this directed films like Halloween 4 and Marked for Death. I'm not sure how much that helped this one, but it's a fun trip nonetheless. If you enjoyed the core gameplay of Night Trap, this one adds aliens and laser guns. How could it possibly be bad? When it comes to full motion video games, you don't get much more engrossing or well made than Dracula Unleashed. This is a direct sequel to the original Dracula novel. You are Alexander Morris, and you have come to find out how your brother really died. But you have no clue the terror that has been unleashed on London. The Drac is back, and he has the ability to assume a new form to mask his identity. You need to travel around the area, talk to people, put together clues, and stop Dracula before he kills again. You have to be mindful of the time because you have less than a week to figure it out. It takes things like the time of day into consideration when looking for clues, and it even requires you to sleep. Don't sleep, and you could meet an untimely fate. There's a daily newspaper to read, a journal to keep, and always be sure to have your crucifix equipped at night. It calls itself an interactive gothic horror movie, and that's as good a description as any. There's no real gameplay here other than making choices of what to click on the screen, which amounts to little more than watching video if you're in the right place at the right time. But the story is well done, the video is decent, and the outcome changes depending on how well you do. It's often overlooked, but a great adventure and well worth your time. How bad is it, Professor? She is bit by the vampire, but not so bad as to die yet. If she is bit again... I cannot believe it. It is too much like Lucy's ordeal. Yeah, but this time we know what it is. Come, you and I return to the asylum. We let Alexander go rest. Yeah. I was torn on whether or not to include Silphied on this list because technically it's a vertical shoot 'em up. But full motion video is such an integral part of the experience, I decided it was well worth the addition. This was a visual stunner on the Sega CD in 1993. It's a remake of a computer game by Game Arts, but radically enhanced with new video backgrounds that play out while you shoot down your enemies. The cinematics were gorgeous and easily among the best produced for the platform. It was the kind of experience that made you glad you owned a Sega CD. And let me tell you, you didn't get that but so often. I honestly don't understand why Sega didn't make more games with this idea. Sprites and polygons over a video background. They could have done it with countless other genres. As well as it worked here, it would have been radically different from anything you would have gotten on the Sega Genesis. This is a jewel in the crown of the Sega CD, and a taste of what was possible. The leader of the terrorists solemnly introduced himself as Zakarte. The survivors of the Galaxy Union and the Colony Planet's fleet assembled all their forces to strike at Zakarte. 64 light years lay across their way to the solar system. 
After drastic restructuring and the addition of reinforcements to the tactical fighter spacecraft, the SA-77 Silphide, their last resort, the remaining fleet began the counterattack. Their destination? The mother planet, Earth. The best full motion video game on the Sega CD and my choice for the number one spot is Road Avenger. Like many games on this list, the appeal goes well past the gameplay itself, which is little more than mashing the buttons and directions according to the on-screen prompts. The real draw to this one is the cinematic presentation, the soundtrack, and the incredibly appealing Road Warrior inspired revenge story. Take your souped up sports car and run down the gang that killed your wife. That's the whole game right there and it's a thrilling ride start to finish. The art and animation is great even though it does have the typical graininess you expect from Sega CD Video. It's based on an old Data East Laserdisc arcade game which Wolf Team ported shortly after the Sega CD launched in North America. It's been released on a number of platforms since, often with better video quality, but without the Sega CD's opening theme song, which really impacts the appeal for me. This is the best version of this game, and if you want a full motion video experience that captures the best of the genre during the 16-bit generation, this right here is your Huckleberry. It's an interesting thing talking about full motion video in hindsight. With today's sensibilities and the passage of time, it's really easy to crap all over the genre as a complete waste of time and effort. No kidding there, I do it all the time because this antiquated game type has long since passed its appeal to me. But taking you back to 1992 when the Sega CD launched, these games look so different from the type of stuff you normally played. It wasn't just the appeal of live action video, but also the incredible draw of hand drawn animation. Very quickly games were looking like cartoons and that change was a major departure for a great many of us. With time and experience it became pretty clear that full motion video was mostly a one trick pony. The majority of titles didn't offer much beyond interactive cinematics, and even when it was good, it still didn't offer the depth of traditional gaming. To be more blunt, there wasn't much to do in these games unless they were blended with other genres. That's why a game like Silphie stood out on the platform. It mixed the mechanics of a traditional vertical shoot 'em up and left the video to be essentially the background visuals. This was also the case with Dracula Unleashed, which combined a point and click mystery with the full motion video. And I think that is the direction game developers should have gone. Instead of making games that revolved around quick time events during the full motion video, they should have developed traditional platformers, running guns, beat em ups, shooters, and RPGs with the video simply as backgrounds or the surrounding environment. This would have given traditional gameplay an entirely new look that made these titles stick out as something you could only get on a CD based machine. Since the Sega CD lacked any upgrade in the color department, this was essentially the only standout feature it had to separate its library. Sega may have built sprite scaling and rotation into its guts, but it was never prepared to actually support the feature in any meaningful way. You can chalk that up to the technology not being done well, or you can just call it Sega making bad decisions. The end result is still the same. If Sega's main focus was going to be full motion video, the Sega CD needed a larger color palette and a video system that used a similar combination setup as the 32X. The design that hit the retail market was ill prepared to do anything particularly well, and that played havoc on the library. It was a $300 device with an identity crisis, a trademark of Sega's often rushed and patchwork decision making. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.